can read to you. Perfect. Out of it, if you would like me to. Sure. Because uh, it's sort of a funny story, and I, I thought maybe that would be interesting. Is the, here is the true story about my uncle Glenn and a cow. It happened 70 years ago, and I'll tell it to you now. It was in the state of Illinois. It took place at my grandfather's farm, and I loved to visit them every summer. I had happy memories. It had a certain charm. Every day there were cows. You milked them twice a day. I never helped milk them, but I went to the barn to play. There was one cow named Daisy. My grandma milked her every day. One day she got too sick to milk her, and in bed she had to stay. She said to her son, Glenn, I'm sick. This chore you need to do. Milk my cow Daisy for me. And Glenn, Glenn said, Mom, I'll do it for you. But they didn't ask Daisy if she approved of their plan. When Glenn sat down upon the stool, Daisy kicked. She didn't want that man. Daisy knew it wasn't Grandma there, so she kicked her feet and switched her tail. The bucket tipped over, and so did Glenn. He kept trying to milk her, but to no avail. Finally, he went up to the house and said, Mom, what shall I do? Can I borrow your dress and apron and sunbonnet too? <laughs> he put the clothes on and the sunbonnet too, walked into the barn, and let Daisy get a good view. Daisy saw the dress and the apron and the sunbonnet blue. She calmed right down, let out a friendly moo. Glenn could milk Daisy now if the dress and sunbonnet she could see. Daisy would stand real still, as contented as could be. This went on twice every day until Grandma Pearl Miles got well. I laughed and thought to myself, someday this will be a story to tell. <laughs> uh, this was my dad's family. And my mother and dad were uh, divorced when I was in fourth grade. But I always went every summer and visited them. And uh, we really had a nice, nice time and everything. They always buy me some school clothes and take me to see the free shows. You sit on a big blanket on Saturday night and watch the free shows and run the streets and get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs>
family didn't like to very much. And uh, so he gave me her address and I wrote her and she wrote me back and wrote me back and wrote me back and wrote, and it went on for three years until I got discharged. And uh, we had never met each other. But we she was my pen pal for well, better than three years, really. And she, uh, I guess we just fell in love in the, with the letters. Wow. I got home in August, never called her for a month. And I called, and she lived in Peoria. And uh, she said, uh, I'd come on over if you'd like. So I went over on a Saturday night. And Almost every night after that, and we got married in uh, December seventeenth, fifty-five. Wow! And Was there a reason month. that you didn't call her for that month? Uh, <laughs> I think I was a little afraid, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm very glad I did. Uh, very glad. It's been. A, mm -hmm. She's helped me a whole lot. With my, uh, with my life, really. Um, it just seems like that um, I wrote him every day. Um, I think he won't read back almost every day, too, except my writing. He said he could hardly read my writing. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. But, um, what did you think when you got that first letter? I didn't know what to think, you know. Um, I don't even know really what he said. He didn't have too much to say. Um, he just said who he was, how old he was, um, what he was doing in the Navy, what he did every day, you know. And I said, boy. And then, and then a couple of days later, another letter would come. <laughs> it was really she cute. was in high school. Yeah, I was in high school. Yeah, I was a senior when all this happened, you know. Yeah. And I believe I sent him a picture, and then he sent me a picture, you know. Okay. Yeah. And then you met three years later. Yeah. And, three years later. And so he told me how he felt when he went over there. He was a little nervous. How what. did you, How did you feel when he came over? I didn't know what to think, you know. Um, I didn't know what to wear, what to put on, how to look, how to act, you know. And it just it just came off so good, you know, because he was so calm and like I am. You know, I mean, I didn't know what to expect, you know. <laughs> it's so funny. And then he says you asked him to marry him, huh? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. That just come out of nowhere, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It <laughs> was so funny. We had a really simple wedding. Um, my sister and her husband stood up for us. It was a real quiet, it was in the evening. And it was really funny because when we went in the church, it was no snow. We climbed, it was like three feet of snow. <laughs> really, <laughs> there was a lot of snow. We couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we had a real simple reception. And, uh, you know, yeah. Oh. I think it was about maybe 150 people. Yeah. Something like that. So, what's it like being married to Mel? That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> He's a very good man, very good husband. Very good father. Yeah. Good. Yeah. He's very understanding. Yeah. He probably puts up with a lot with me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess me old girl. Tell me when. Something. <laughs>